viewers welcome to the video lecture series on machine learning this session is on polynomial regression in the previous session you have st studied the linear regression and multiple linear regression and you know very well the difference between these two and also you have seen one solved example on linear regression and one solved example on the multiple linear regression now let us move to the next type it is polynomial regression not the linear regression model and the multiple linear regression cannot be used if the relationship between the independent and dependent variables is not linear so when the data points are not linear as shown in figure a we cannot draw a straight line instead we can draw a curve so what is the meaning of this and also look at the second statement if we try to use a linear regression it will result in large error in previous examples and all what you have observed is the data points were linear these were the data points so if the data points are linear then when you draw the best fit line so the best fit line passes through the data points and we could see very minimum error so now what is happening is the data points are not linear if the data points are not linear your graph will appear like this suppose if you draw a line then what will happen you can see that the line the best fit line is appearing here and the data points are here so then you can see maximum error that can exist as the data is not linear here and if we draw a straight line we will get errors so to avoid such errors we will draw a curve here so now we will draw a curve when you draw a curve then the type of the model resulting from it becomes a polynomial regression model actually you can solve that non linear regression problem either by transformation or polynomial regression this session is about polynomial regression but still you should be knowing what exactly you can do if you are using the method transformation it is a process to convert non linear data to linear data and use the linear regression model example consider an exponential function y equal to a into e to the power of b into x so in transformation because your data is non linear what you have to do is first you have to convert this into linear data let us take for example if you are having a function y equal to a into e raised to the power of b into x so this is what this is a polynomial this is a polynomial function which is what representing the non linear data now here you cannot use the linear regression for that what we will do is if we use linear regression then we will get large amount of errors so how to solve this using transformation now this is the equation apply the logarithm on both the sides so i can write for y ln of y here you can see you have two terms so logarithmic properties you can take then this one you know that you have a logarithmic property ln of a to the power of b is how will you write b ln of a you can make use of this property and convert this term into this one so you are having finally what ln of y equal to ln of a plus b into x why we are taking only b into x is now ln of e is equal to 1 so we finally will get ln of y equal to ln of a plus of b into x now we got an equation in linear form so that means this is a we can apply the linear regression model and predict the value of the dependent variable y in terms of the independent variable after we get the result okay now you are applying the linear regression model you will get the result but you need to convert that back to into a non linear data because you started with non linear data you converted that non linear data into linear data you applied the linear regression model you got the result and now the result has to be again converted back to non linear data these steps are related to which method transformation but now we'll see polynomial regression so this session is about polynomial regression it can handle non linear relationship among variables using the nth degree of the polynomial the second degree polynomial you call it as a quadratic equation it is given as a0 plus a1 into x plus a2 into x square you can see here the highest degree is what 2 so we say it is a second degree polynomial equation and in this equation you can see the highest degree is your cubic so your e expression is a0 plus a1 into x plus a2 into x square plus a3 into x cube now in all the previous regression methods you have been computing the coefficients a0 a1 a2 like this so if it is a quadratic equation like this then you have only a0 a1 and a2 to compute if if you have a cubic then you need to compute a0 a1 a2 and a3 so if the degree in the equation increases then the number of coefficients also increases But generally what we do is we will go for maximum fourth degree beyond this higher order polynomials takes some strange shapes and make the curve more flexible 
ओवर फिटिंग में रिजल्ट इफ यूज बी ऑन दी फोर्थ डिग्री लेट एस सी द इक्वेशन हियर दैट आर यूज देन वी कैन मेक यूज ऑफ एन एग्जाम्पल कंसिडर द पॉलिनोमियल ऑफ द सेकेंड डिग्री सपोज इफ दिस इज द सेकेंड डिग्री पॉलिनोमियल इक्वेशन देन द कोफिशेंट्स ए नॉट ए वन एंड ए टू हाउ डू यू कैलकुलेट हियर इन पॉलिनोमियल रिग्रेशन यू हैव टू मेक यूज ऑफ दिस फॉर्मूला ए इक्वल टू टेक द इनवर्स ऑफ द एक्स मैट्रिक्स एंड मल्टीप्लाइड बाई बी लेट एस चेक नाउ वॉट डस दिस एक्स होल्ड्स एंड वॉट डस बी होल्ड्स नाउ एक्स मैट्रिक्स यू हैव टू रिमेंबर लाइक दिस ओके दिस इज योर एन इन टू समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई थर्ड वैल्यू इन द फर्स्ट रो इज समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई स्क्वायर सेकेंड रो एलिमेंट समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई स्क्वायर समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई क्यूब थर्ड रो समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई स्क्वायर समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई क्यूब समेशन ऑफ एक्स आई टू दी पावर फोर and what about the b matrix b matrix you need to form like this there is only one column here first element is summation of xi second is summation of xi into yi third one is summation of xi square into yi so now it is easy also for you to substitute if you remember this correctly consider the following data set determine the poly so this way the question can be asked in the question there will be two columns one is your x and another is y so this way only you used to get the problem statement earlier also for linear and multiple linear x is your independent variable and y is your dependent variable so the values are mentioned here there are four data points in the matrix you need to substitute this values what is summation of xi what is summation of xi square what is summation of xi cube what is summation of xi4 and here you have one n here n is equal to the number of data points in the uh, given problem statement in this problem statement how many data points are there only they have given four here four rows are there so four so that for all these values to get substituted let us compute and keep ready in a tabular form first take because this x value and y value are given simply write down x value given 1 2 3 4 y value given 1 4 9 15 okay 1 2 3 4 1 4 9 15 you write down all those then you add up you will get summation of xi when you add up all the y element summation of yi when you then the next one is xi into yi so you have to multiply 1 into 1 One, two into four, eight; three into nine, twenty-seven; four into fifteen, sixty. Then you just take the sum of this. You will get ninety-six. Similarly, x i square is so x i square. How do you compute? One to the power of two, one; two to the power of two, four; three to the power of two, nine; four to the power of two, sixteen. And here you can check. You can do x i cube also. One to the power of cube one; one two to the power of three, eight; three to the power of Three twenty-seven four to the power of three sixty-four. Similarly, you do x i four also, and here there is one more. Okay, x i square into y. Whatever x i square you have computed, that you multiplied with y. Okay, that will give you x i one into one is one. Four into four sixteen. Nine into nine eighty-one. Sixteen into fifteen two forty. Add up, you will get three thirty. So these values you got here. Now it is easy because once you get these values, your job is only to substitute. You can check here n value you are substituting. Yes, four. Summation of x i is here ten. You will write down ten. Summation of x i square is here thirty. Thirty. Summation of x i ten. Summation of x i square thirty. You will write here thirty. Next is summation of x i cube. Here you have hundred. Next is summation of x i square. How much you have? Thirty. You will write here. Summation of x i cube hundred. Then summation of x i to the power four three fifty four. Now after you form the matrix X, take the inverse of the matrix X and multiply with the matrix B. B matrix is summation of y i. Y i is twenty nine. So you will write here twenty nine. Summation of x i into y i is ninety six. Here you can check in the table. Then summation of x i square into y i. So where we, where it is here three thirty eight. Now what? No, you got two matrices. One is three by three that you are multiplying with three by one. So your resultant matrix will be how much? You three by one, wherein you will have three rows and one column. So this is your resultant matrix. Once you multiply, you are getting these values. So how do you interpret the values of the final matrix? The first element here will be your a naught. This one you will be your a one, and this one will be your a two. Now write down this equation. Y naught equal to a naught plus a one into x plus a two into x square. Substitute a naught value is minus of point seven five. A one is 
पॉइंट नाइन फाइव ए टू इज पॉइंट सेवन फाइव अब आफ्टर यू सब्सटीट्यूट वॉट एवर यू गेट हियर फाइनली दैट इज योर पॉलिनोमियल रिग्रेशन मॉडल इन दिस वी हैव सीन ए पॉलिनोमियल इक्वेशन ऑफ सेकेंड डिग्री सो वॉट एवर न्यूमेरिकल यू हैव सॉल्व एंड वॉट एवर फॉर्मुलाज यू हैव सॉल्व आर ऑल परटेनिंग टू वॉट द पॉलिनोमियल इक्वेशन ऑफ सेकेंड डिग्री सो दिस इज हाउ यू नीड टू सॉल्व इट Hope you find this session helpful please like share and subscribe to my channel thank you bye bye and take care